This presentation is about the Safe and Supportive Minnesota Schools Act, Senate File 783, House File 826, a bogus bullying bill. Part 1, The Anoka Hennepin Story, a blueprint for the nation. In the upcoming 2014 session of the Minnesota Legislature, our state legislators will be considering the passage of the Safe and Supportive Minnesota Schools Act. This bill, if passed, will make Minnesota the test case for intrusive federal control through the Minnesota Department of Education and the proposed School Climate Center Division, all under the guise of ending bullying. But is this really about bullying? What if the word safe has another meaning? The Safe and Supportive Minnesota Schools Act is a bogus bullying bill. Under the banner of bullying prevention, this bill will shift local control from individual school districts over to a costly school climate center within the Minnesota Department of Education that will oversee all bullying incidents, real or alleged. This power grab by the government is costly and dangerous. You, the taxpayer, will live with the negative consequences and will foot the bill. How will this play out in Minnesota? We have the model for this right in our own backyard. The disingenuous and costly 2012 lawsuit settlement in Anoka Hennepin should be a warning to every citizen in the state of Minnesota. The consent decree settlement was described by U.S. Assistant Attorney General Thomas Perez as a model for schools across the nation. Perez also called the settlement a comprehensive blueprint for sustainable reform. A spokeswoman from the Southern Poverty Law Center described this as a truly historic model for this school district, the state of Minnesota, and nationally. Star Tribune reporter Maria Elena Baca called this agreement a breakthrough in efforts to combat the bullying of gay and lesbian students in schools from coast to coast. The federal government focused on our Minnesota school district. It all began with Anoka Hannafin School District at 11. It is imperative that we learn from what happened in the largest school district in the state. Remember the famous quote, never let a serious crisis go to waste? Well, the federal government, along with the Southern Poverty Law Center and the National Center for Lesbian Rights, looked for conditions in District 11 that could be molded into a crisis. In 2011, they linked three unrelated factors and imposed a solution for a problem that didn't exist. Number one, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman was running for president, and this was her hometown. Number two, the Anoka Hennepin School District had seven suicides within a two-year period. Note, other school districts had a higher percentage per student population. And three, Anoka Hennepin was the only school district that had a sexual orientation curriculum policy that kept the teaching of homosexuality out of the school curriculum. It was passed in 2009 to replace a stricter 1995 version. These factors were pieced together by several power groups and shaped into a perfect storm for the Anoka Hennepin School Board to deal with. The created crisis unfolded. The federal government, the Southern Poverty Law Center, and the National Center for Lesbian Rights used the seven tragic suicides as a means to bring in federally controlled changes to Anoka Hennepin under the guise of bullying and harassment prevention. They ignored the fact that Anoka Hennepin had always been a leader in bullying prevention. On December 3, 2010, Superintendent Dennis Carlson stated, Based on all of the information we have been able to gather, none of the suicides were connected to incidents of bullying or harassment. But facts did not matter. The deception continued. On May 24, 2011, the Southern Poverty Law Center and the National Center for Lesbian Rights threatened to sue the school district unless the school board rescinded its sexual orientation curriculum policy, which they called a gag policy a policy they claimed contributed to a hostile environment that tolerated bullying. 
the national center for lesbian rights admitted that they had a serious assist from the department of justice and the department of education office of civil rights known as the neutrality policy the sexual orientation curriculum policy stated in part teaching about sexual orientation is not a part of the district adopted curriculum rather such matters are best addressed within individual family homes churches or community organizations anoka hennepin staff in the course of their professional duties shall remain neutral on matters regarding sexual orientation including but not limited to student-led discussions the gay activists wanted to abolish neutrality that's right neutrality on february twenty eighth two thousand and eleven dozens of gay rights advocates and activists from outside the district as well stormed the school board meeting calling for the board to rescind the sexual orientation curriculum policy when one parent expressed her support for the policy she was mocked heckled and interrupted by gay activists one rude woman who advocated for change had to forcibly be removed from the board by a police officer after the school board refused to change the policy a lawsuit was filed against the anoka hennepin school district by the southern poverty law center the national center for lesbian rights and other law firms on behalf of five students alleging that school administrators did not take action when students brought reports of harassment and bullying to them three weeks later a sixth student was added to the lawsuit nineteen lawyers descended on our school district the plaintiffs brought the suit to vindicate their rights under title nine the minnesota human rights act and the equal protection clause of the fourteenth amendment to the united states constitution according to a report in the american school board journal the obama administration has redefined title nine requirements from responding to peer harassment in a reasonable manner to eliminating harassment and a hostile environment the suit alleged that the sexual orientation curriculum policy denigrated lgbt people and was put in place simply out of hatred for them they also charged that the policy perpetuated a hostile anti-lgbt climate one of intolerance and violence that was responsible for an epidemic of anti-gay harassment and bullying against lgbt students the sexual orientation curriculum policy was at the center of the lawsuit in february two thousand and twelve the rolling stone magazine produced a hit piece entitled school of hate one town's war on gay teens the article described a culture war being raged by local evangelicals inspired by their high-profile congressional representative michelle bachman who graduated from anoka high school one church in anoka was singled out as an example of religious conservative beliefs and as a result the pastor and others received telephone death threats the rolling stone article included a one-page poster with photos of ten students who had committed suicide all appearing to be victims of gay bullying according to the district eleven spokesperson there were seven documented suicides in the two-year period and only one was a gay student superintendent dennis carlson denounced the article as a brutal and distorted attack outside gay activist organizations continued to pressure the school board to revoke the sexual orientation curriculum policy board members staff and parents who testified received hate mail from gay activists on a regular basis superintendent carlson stated that the hate mail he received included suggestions of how he should die even in obscene detail on february thirteenth two thousand and twelve the school board rescinded the sexual orientation curriculum policy on march fifth two thousand and twelve the school board in a non-unanimous vote caved into the pressure of the special interest groups and gay activists and approved a sixty one page consent decree with the u s department of justice and the u s department of education office of civil rights greg brooker who oversees the civil division at the u s attorney's office in minnesota said the scope of this effort to counter harassment is unprecedented the anoka hennepin school district 
is now under the watchful eye of the federal government in a partnership for the next five years to the tune of over one million dollars per year the u s department of justice and the u s department of education will be monitoring their compliance remember this suit was not about past suicides it was about allegations that some teachers did not handle bullying and harassment incidents properly school board chair tom heideman in a prepared statement to the media on the night of the settlement made it perfectly clear that after an exhaustive investigation and i quote our administrators and teachers dealt with the harassment reports in a professional timely and appropriate manner our staff did their jobs end quote the six student plaintiffs were each awarded forty five thousand dollars a two hundred and seventy thousand dollar lump sum soon afterwards these students were given a photo opportunity with attorney general eric holder in washington d c this huge overreach of the federal government into a local school district was unheard of the result a loss of local control the following mandated reforms are a part of the consent decree for the anoka hennepin school district retain an equity consultant an equity coordinator a title nine coordinator a mental health consultant hold mandatory trainings for all staff and students on a regular basis report those who do not receive the training develop a peer leadership program hold in-depth discussions for staff on gender identity gender expression and sexual orientation submit written compliance reports to the federal government after each trimester of each year install surveillance cameras to monitor hot spots create a data system to track problems and a task force to bring in additional requirements Additional suggested recommendations for future implementation from the Anoka Hennepin School District Anti-Bullying, Anti-Harassment Task Force that met this year include gender-neutral bathrooms, locker room monitors, homosexual-themed books beginning in kindergarten, such as the Amaze Book Project for Children, expanding mental health screening, leadership opportunities for gay straight alliance students, yearly student surveys, and comprehensive, inclusive health and human development education K through 12, which means explicit sex education. Of Senate File 783 and House File 826 contains vague language and a significant number of subjective loopholes that can open dangerous doors. The Safe Schools Manual and the Governor's Prevention of School Bullying Task Force Report provide a window through which we can see the direction this vague language will take us when senate file 783 house file 826 mentions valuing diversity the safe schools manual makes it clear that we are talking about valuing sexual diversity known as sexual orientation and gender identity expression when senate file 783 says the bill will provide an inclusive curriculum the Governor's Prevention of School Bullying Task Force report adds that the curriculum will promote inclusivity and appreciation of differences in pre-K through 12 lessons, learning opportunities, and curricula designed to educate students on the value of diversity. The Safe Schools Manual describes the ongoing process of curricular revision, particularly in the areas of history, social studies, literature, and health education. This ongoing process of curricular revision is described in this manual as querying the curriculum, going subject by subject. Pre-existing curricula will be broadened to include LGBT images, classroom libraries, story times, and assigned readings should be thoughtfully structured to include the full range of human diversity. Educators are encouraged to take advantage of teachable moments. When Senate File 783 or House File 826 refers to fostering student collaborations, the Governor's Prevention of School Bullying Task Force report refers to these student collaborations as Gay Straight Alliances, GSAs. It's important to note that Outfront Minnesota, a sexually radical gay activist organization, is the driving force behind Senate File 783, House File 826. 
Philip Duran, the legal director of Outfront Minnesota, was a member of the governor's task force. Outfront is a major contributor to the Safe Schools Manual. Many of the LGBT glossary entries are attributed to Outfront. Just imagine what it will look like when this kind of federal control is implemented on a statewide basis under the Safe and Supportive Minnesota Schools Act, the bogus bullying bill. Learn the lesson from Anoka Hennepin. When the federal government takes over in an area not designated by the Constitution, it becomes a costly bureaucratic nightmare. Patrick Henry said, the Constitution is not an instrument for the government to restrain the people. It is an instrument for the people to restrain the government, lest it come to dominate our lives and interests. We must restrain and stop the bogus bullying bill now. Voice your concerns with your legislator. Thank you.